I am going to rip this iron. Done my three things. I'm going to rip it. I'm going to rip it. Definitely did not rip that one. Now, I would imagine we've maybe had the extreme of that sometimes, but I would imagine we've all had the fats and the thins with our golf irons, and it is not an enjoyable way to play golf. I know I did not enjoy, maybe a little bit, I thought that was quite impressive, but generally you do not enjoy that type of shot. In today's lesson, I'm gonna give you three key components of an iron swing that you need to make sure that you're doing to see that you're starting to crush your irons each and every single time. So let's dive into that lesson and see how we're gonna do it. So, oh, we've even left a dent in there on that lovely little top. As I hit that shot there, there was three things going on that I did not want to happen, not what we need to happen as we actually get the more crushed iron swing. For you keen-eyed viewers out there who were watching at home then, you may have noticed I was slightly behind the golf ball as I was addressing it. So a little bit more of my weight, about 60% of my weight, it might have just looked to you, was slightly behind the golf ball here. Also, as I actually came into impact, obviously there's not a slow motion swing there, but my shaft was leaning away from the target and I was actually getting my lead wrist here cupping up and trying to scoop the golf ball up into the air because we all know when we hit a nice iron shot and we see one on telly, always gets really high up in the air. So I was trying to create a little bit of scooping and get it actually up in the air. And then as I finished as well, even though my right heel's off the ground there, my trail heel, I'm actually still on the back foot. I'm hitting the ball off my back foot as we'd class it. So I'm not actually hitting it off the front foot as we're going through. And those three things all worked into me hitting that beautiful little top shot there. So we need to do the polar opposite of that. We need to change it. So the first thing we need to do before we actually make a golf swing, we need to get a good setup. So I'm talking here with irons, whether it's your four iron down to your pitching wedge, but in general, let's say your mid irons. When we take the setup now, we've got the middle of our body. I'll just put this cane in fact, straight down the middle here. So there's the middle and I'm gonna line it up here with that golf ball. I've got a seven iron out at the moment. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my set off, I'm gonna take my feet and make sure that the middle of my body is now directly over the center of this cane. And then I'm gonna step out the appropriate manner. So let's say that I've stepped out three quarters of a foot, maybe 10 inches on each foot here. I've now placed the golf ball, because I've got a seven iron, just ahead of the cane. So it's slightly in front, so it's just to the left side to target side of my sternum as I've taken my setup and then the big one here as we saw from my original now I'm leaning back away from target behind this cane into this trail foot here so it feels about 60% of my weight is now in that trail foot to hit good iron shots what we're going to try and do in setup is just ever so slightly have a little bit more of our weight towards trail side. I'm not saying that we're going to have 70%, we're not stacking it all left. What I want to say is just a tiny, tiny amount. So about 55% of that weight is just into that lead side for me there. So as you see, as I do that then, my sternum just moves, just a fraction, if you just see it now where it is located relative to the cane, just marginally in front there. So when we take our setup, I know we want to hit beautiful, high, crisp iron shots, but we don't need to be behind it here, trying to help it up from there. What we need to do is tip number one, and must do is see that that setup, we get centered to start with, and then the tiniest little bit more weight goes towards our lead side there. So we've got that nice little bit of weight towards target side that's going to help us get it a little bit more in front and see that the sternum's in front of the golf ball and get that nice lead of ball then turf into impact. Okay, so tip number two, once we've got that nice little bit of a setup going on, the second thing we saw was the shaft leaning away, all because of what I'm doing with my lead wrist. As I cup it or extend it as it would be called like this, we see the shaft now actually start to lean back away from the target. The head's in front 
of the handle and the shaft is leaning back. We want to see that we're actually getting the opposite. We want to see that we've got some, ex uh, some flexion here and we've actually got a little bit of bowing going on. So we've got the handle behind my hands now. So it would look a bit more like this into impact as opposed to seeing what we would do with the cupped wrist here. We're looking for bowed or flexed, not cupped and extended getting this shaft lean the wrong way. So what I want us to do, we're going to make some small swings and actually just practice coming down to impact and seeing that this left wrist is starting to actually do this or the lead wrist, left wrist for me being a right handed player. It's this feeling now that I'm not letting it cup up a little bit and get a little bit scoopy and flicky. I'm almost, if I start my downswing, trying to show my knuckles to the golf ball at impact. I'm not trying to turn them away. Show my knuckles down into impact. So as I get into it now, you would see a nice little bit of shaft lean going on there as opposed to scoop the knuckles away, get the shaft leaning away from my target in this way. So tip number two, we've got to see that we've got a little bit a bowing of the lead wrist or flexing and seeing we've got the shaft leaning towards target and a great way to get this feeling what I like to do with a lot of my lessons when we're uh, trying to get this feeling going on if I just peg one up here now I don't want to take a huge divot out of this beautiful tee we've all hit a ball into the trees one time or another, I know, I know, I've done it too. We've gone and hit a shot with our driver and we've finished in the trees. Now, as you can see here, the canopy on the trees is quite low. It's only about 15, 16 foot in the air. So if we think of a normal iron shot, we're at least triple that height. It's getting well above there. It's going above the trees. What we've got to try and do is actually make some shots now to get this feeling of shaft lean. You're going to take your seven iron or your eight iron and you're going to hit some shots, only half swings, and imagine you're punching it out of the trees. You're going to keep it low. You're not going to let it go up into the trees and rattle out. We're going to see that we get it working low and coming out of the trees. So to do that, we've got to get this little bit of shaft lean. So take the setup, get this feeling of bowing, that 55% weight forwards and just a little half swing and seeing that, and as you can see, as I've held it off, it's not here and cupped, I've held, and it came out with a really flat fight. It only probably got about 15 foot up in the air of there, and I'm safely out of the trees. So tip one, a little bit of tiny bit of weight towards our lead side, 55% in the lead, 45 in the trail. Tip two, let's see that we've got some bowing of the lead wrist and getting some shaft lead by imagining we're chipping it out of the trees and then tip three. As I said earlier, that last shot that I hit, the first one, I was hitting off my back foot. See a lot of people do this, and what we tend to see in a great way with the cane is that as they hit it, the hips don't actually get in front here. I'm actually, if anything, back behind the cane now, so I can feel a lot of pressure in my trail foot. It's really working down there, it's quite painful. I want to see that I'm coming up off it and hitting and posting into my lead side. I wanted to see that I'm a straight line from my shoulders all the way down over my lead side. I'm not back this way, hitting off my lead foot. Again, if we think of any great iron player, you know, think of the great strikers, even if you just think of Tiger hitting some shots at the Masters this year when he won, still amazes me that, absolutely incredible. When he hit those crisp, glorious iron shots, he was up here, nice finish. We saw him solid, we saw him balanced and controlled. He wasn't off his back foot, it wasn't a hoik. If you think of your mate on a Saturday when he's having a good old chop with his irons and taking divots and thinning it, probably here doesn't get off that trail foot. So the final tip and a must do that we want to do when we're hitting irons to see that we get strike is transfer the weight from the trail foot, get off that back foot and transfer it into the lead foot so we can see now that the club's bottoming out at the right point. If we've got that good setup and we get that shaft lean and we add that little bit of movement in towards the lead side and get off the trail side, you will start to hit a lot better iron shots. So let's see that in the final one. So good setup, tiny bit of weight there. I'm going to imagine I'm hitting out of the trees 
and I'm going to transfer from my trail to my lead side three must-dos for an iron and I'll crush it. Oh, don't know if the mic picked that up, but that sounded fantastic. Beautiful little divot. As we see there, there's the cane. It's about an inch after it, nice and shallow. Absolutely ripped that, that one. That was one of my best shots in a long time. So three must-dos with your irons, guys. Go through the video again, check them off and see that you're getting those points ticked off. If you are, you will start to crush your irons. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. If you have, do hit that like button for me also. Drop me a comment down in the comments box below. What are you working on? What did you like about that? What tip out of those three is going to be the one that really gets you crushing it? Also, remember, if you want to keep improving your golf with me and you want more free golf lessons, hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any future lessons. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.